Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Mike Malone, founder and CEO of Small Steps Labs. Mike, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, since it's the first time we're talking to each other, so I would love to know a bit about the company since you're also founder. So tell me a bit about what is specific, you know, problem area that you saw uh, that you want to solve, which kind of led to creation of a new company. Well, my background, I'm a software engineer, and um, I like to say my happy place is distributed systems architecture. I like building large software systems and building teams that build large software systems. And I've been lucky in that I've been able to do that a number of times in my career. And the impetus for the business was that in in those systems, um, security is really an unsolved, unsolved problem. Um, there are a, a lot of pain points uh, in, in securing large software systems, and um, that's what we're what we're building to solve. So a lot of things have happened since you created the company. Uh, we are moving more and more towards cloud native environment. So can you also talk about how you have seen the whole evolution of distributed systems themselves? Because that has also changed the way we look at security and a lot of other things. In the time that we've been around as a company. Uh, well, Kubernetes is obviously a, a big difference, right? Containerization. Um, but I'd say it's been a maturation of uh, processes and techniques that uh, have been in use, at least in the circles that I've been running in uh, for, uh, you know, probably 10 years or so. Um, microservice, agile development, DevOps, CI, CD, I think is really um, proliferating. And that, that above all else, I think is what, what we've been seeing. When we talk about security, uh, first of all, it's no longer just one thing. There are so, especially if you look at the uh, cloud native uh, space. Uh, so can you also talk about what are the specific area that you focus on? What we specialize in is automated certificate management for internal systems. Right? for server to server or service to service or connecting to databases, network communication, um, uh, issuing the credentials and managing identities for, for the, those inter-process uh, communications. So is it within the organization or because, you know, once again, we live in a multi-cloud world, so sometimes, you know, things are spread across cloud. When we do talk about, you know, so again, there are a couple of things you talk about, identity management, access control is there. So there is not just one thing. So uh, from that also, uh, authorization is one, authentication is one. So, so talk about the scope of a smaller step. Well, we focus on the authentication piece, at least for now, you know, who knows what's in the future, uh, which is foundational, right? You can't authorize until you've authenticated. And, um, you know, you mentioned multi-cloud and, you know, hybrid, these infrastructures are getting increasingly complicated and heterogeneous. And one nice thing about cryptographic authentication, uh, as opposed to maybe older school sort of techniques using IP addresses and MAC addresses is um, the network really becomes irrelevant, at least from a theoretical perspective. So uh, cross-cloud communication is just as secure and uh, works exactly the same way as communication within the cloud uh, when you're using cryptographic techniques. One more thing is, uh, once again, uh, automation, uh, that is the key in, once again, modern and cloud work. Uh, when we do look at, you know, certificate manager, this is not a new problem. The problem has been solved. So to talk, what, what value are you bringing through automation? Because, you know, once again, when we do look at security, these are not the bugs that we have to worry about. These are the human errors that we have to worry about. Right. Yeah. And X509 certificates, which is, you know, what we deal in primarily, uh, we also do SSH certificates, but X509 certificates are some of the oldest uh, technologies out there, uh, security technologies. Uh, in, in fact, you know, predating the web, X509 is an ITUT standard uh, from the 80s that was being developed by, you know, the telco standard. Um, so certainly the technology has been around for a while, but um, it, it hasn't been applied at the scale that we're seeing it being applied uh, at now. And, and really, it's a, you know, an order of magnitude or, or maybe multiple orders of magnitude uh, scale change. So it's really a different different kind of problem that's being solved. And if you look at a lot of the older technologies, it's really about um, manual workflows uh, to, to obtain a certificate using something like OpenSSL uh, and, and manually deploy it to uh, a piece of infrastructure. 
Um, and that works well enough if you're talking about two or three or maybe a dozen certificates uh, for your website or, or whatever. But if you're trying to use TLS to secure all of the communication between all of your microservices, connecting your databases, your Kafka for all of your, uh, you know, Kubernetes components, your operators and, and admission controllers and stuff like that. You're talking about potentially thousands in some cases, hundreds of thousands of certificates. Um, and then if you're applying best practices of short lived certificates, you know, they may need to be renewed uh, uh, daily or hourly or, you know, uh, you, you can't do that manually, obviously. Um, so automation and uh, uh, good compliance, governance, audit, observability around those processes, integration with alerting, uh, these are all of the things that we're bringing to the table. Um, so it, it's, you know, the certificates have been around for a while, but operationalizing certificate management at scale is a new problem. Right, uh, which also kind of leads me to another question, which is like, if we just look at, you know, organizations, what are some of the pain points that are there when it does come to, you know, you did touch upon a few there, but if I can just, you know, broadly, hey, these are the pain points that you saw also, at the same time, if you can also talk, you see a lot of mistakes that may, they make and you want to kind of take that out of the equation as well. There are a lot of sharp edges in, in PKI and certificate management. Um, some of the mistakes that we see made, you know, a lot of complex environments end up, doing some form of certificate management in an ad hoc messy way. So when you talk about like large organizations that have multiple teams, maybe many clusters, uh, multi-cloud, they end up with like a lot of shoestring and bubblegum type solutions uh, where they're stringing stuff together. It doesn't have a lot of good audit, a lot of good control. Uh, they don't have alerting. They don't have like all of those illities that you want in like a large scale system just aren't there. Um, it's hard to really say anything concrete about the security story. You don't know where the keys were generated who's seen them, what's seen them, whether they've transited the network. Um, so, you know, building uh, uh, and applying best practices here uh, where keys are generated, where they're being used and they're short lived and, and renewed on a on a regular cadence with alerting if something goes sideways. Um, it's a it's a big challenge and really hard to build yourself. So, um, you know, what we end up seeing are uh, certificates that are issued for a year or multiple years, um, which, again, presents all sorts of governance and compliance issues around, you know, uh, what happens if there's a compromise there, poorly configured uh, uh, TLS stacks that maybe aren't even checking revocation status for these multi-year certificates, which really provides, you know, very little real security at, at that point. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I mean, just applying these practices at scale, uh, there, there are, there's a, a litany of sort of detailed nuanced things that you have to consider. Um, and, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, we talk about a lot with our, our tool chain, um, is, uh, uh, ease of use, first of all. So w w we were opinionated um, uh, and and make a lot of these decisions and sort of apply best practices for you, make it the right thing, also the easy thing, um, and also misuse prevention. Um, so we make you sort of opt in very uh, uh, intentionally to do something that is maybe dangerous. Just to pick a specific uh, sort of simple example, if you wanted to generate an RSA key that's uh, like 1024 bits, there may be some reason for legacy systems uh, that require uh, that key type, but it's generally not considered cryptographically secure anymore. So we'll, we'll require that you pass in an, uh, uh, an insecure flag to our CLI indicating that you know what you're doing and you want to do it anyways. Um, so, so yeah, I, I mean, this is an area, uh, it's Baroque, um, and it's an area that requires a lot of specialized knowledge that not a lot of people have, even really smart, experienced engineers and operators. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're very sensitive to that. Now, can you also talk a bit about, you know, what does the product look like, you know, from the perspective of users and also uh, you all it's an open core so talk about the balance between open source version and the commercial version so yeah we are open core and uh we have an open source complete tool chain for cert certificate management we have a lot of large enterprises that have picked that up and and use it um and then uh the product what we're bringing to general availability 
is uh, is building around that open core. So it's a hosted instance of our open source certificate management tool chain um, that adds a bunch of enterprise uh, uh, features, right? So governance and, compli- and compliance functionality, uh, audit and observability, alerting. We integrate with your SIM, your Splunk, or your Sumo Logic, or whatever. Um, uh, advanced access controls. And then, of course, it, it, we run it. It's highly available. It's secure. And it's really easy to get started. Started. You know, you click a few buttons in a UI and you're up and running. Um, uh, so uh, it, it's really designed to be sort of the easiest, safest, most secure way to just get get up and running with uh, with certificate management. Mike, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk to me about, of course, the company itself and uh, the automated certificate manager. So thanks for sharing those insights. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thanks. It's been fun.